In today's video, we're gonna talk about how much life insurance actually cost. Let's get after it. So you're looking at life insurance, you're trying to evaluate whether or not you need it. Hint, hint, you do need life insurance. But you wonder how much it's gonna cost because, I mean, it's gotta be crazy expensive, right? Well, the answer to that question is no, it's not. But today we're gonna go over the rating factors, the things that are gonna drive the rate for your life insurance. And if you hold on all the way till the end, I'm gonna give you an example rate that you could get insurance at right now. All right, so you're thinking about getting some life insurance, but the, the thought of how much it costs scares you. So don't be scared. Let's walk through the factors that are gonna come into play with life insurance. Number one, the first thing we need to look at is the amount of coverage that you're wanting. So obviously, stands to reason, the higher the coverage, the higher the premium. So number one, amount of coverage is a driving factor for the rate. Number two is the type of policy that you're gonna look at. So we've done a video in the past that talks about the difference between a permanent plan and term insurance. And what we know is that permanent insurance is typically three to four times more expensive from a premium standpoint than your average term policy is. But what type of term, the length of term that you want also plays uh, its part. So a 10 year term is gonna be cheaper than a 30 year term. So amount of coverage, then policy type, and then number three on the what I consider the first tier of rating is your age. Yes, your age. The younger you are, the cheaper your insurance is, regardless of policy type. The older you are, the more expensive it is, regardless of policy type. So tier one, we're looking at coverage amount. We're looking at type of policy. And then finally, your age. All right, so we've gone through tier one rating factors. Now let's step on to tier two rating factors. And in tier two, we look at your current medical health, your current health. And so we're gonna talk about things like uh, your blood pressure. We're gonna look at cholesterol readings. We're gonna look at what type of medications you're taking. And all of those things play a factor. So if you are perfectly healthy, you have nothing wrong with you, you take no medications, cholesterol's good, blood pressure's good, you're good, then your rates are gonna be better than if you, you know, take cholesterol medicine, if you've got high blood pressure, you know, you're just generally a little bit unhealthier than the perfect marathon runner. So that's a rating factor. Your medical history, and I'm gonna include family history, is also in tier two. So what do we mean by that? Well, family history is just that. If you've had someone in your family that has passed away or had cancer, had heart attack, had a history of some disease, then underwriting is gonna look at you a little differently because you might have some heredity uh, issues with some of those diseases. Like we know that sometimes heart disease can be a hereditary trait, so we look at that. And then your medical history obviously plays into account uh, if you've had cancer in the past, you know, if you've struggled with um, certain blood pressure issues, whatever those things are, those things come into play. And then finally, and this is kind of plays in with how your current health, your height and weight. Your height and weight play a big part. In fact, there are certain rating charts that say if you are this height and this weight, you don't even qualify for our very best rates. If everything else is good. So height and weight are gonna be something, your current health and then your medical and family history all play into what I consider tier two. And then kind of as a side note of tier two is tobacco usage. And tobacco usage automatically will increase your rates, sometimes double. If you smoke, uh, if you vape, if you use smokeless tobacco, those things are going to increase your rate and sometimes, depending upon the other health factors, could disqualify you altogether. So that's tier two. All right, so let's move on to tier three. We're really getting in the weeds here. In tier three, the life insurance companies are gonna look at a number of things. Number one is your driving record. Yes, driving record. I've actually had a case decline before 
because the individual had a DUI, driving under the influence. Now, you might say that has nothing to do with his health, but if they see a history of driving infractions, then their thought is you're much more likely to be killed in an auto accident, so that's an increased hazard. And guess what else? Credit history. Yes, nowadays, life insurance companies, not all but some, will actually look at your credit history. And they know, statistically, that people with higher credit have a higher uh, mortality rate, so they will live longer. At least that's what statistics say. I guess there are a number of factors that come into play there, but that's a, that's a big one. And then finally, we're going to look at, and this is really odd, we're gonna look at your hobbies. You might be asking, what do you mean? Well, on most life insurance applications, it's gonna ask a number of things. Number one, are you a pilot? Do you fly a passenger plane? That can be a big no-no. Uh, do you do bull riding? Do you do any sort of dangerous hobby? If you do any of these, then certain carriers will just decline you right off the bat. Other carriers might accept you, but they're gonna rate you up. So the presence of those weird hobbies, those cool things, um, can actually go against you. All right, so we've got the three tiers of rating. We've gone through them, but we still didn't talk about how much life insurance actually costs. So thankfully, we're in the year 2023. Life insurance rates are one of the few types of insurances that has actually stayed consistent over the last decade, meaning they haven't skyrocketed. And in fact, in some cases, they've actually gone down some because in general, people are living longer. So I thought we'd look at just a straight example of a 35 year old. We're gonna look at a 35 year old male, 35 year old female, and we're gonna assume that they're healthy. Not marathon runner healthy, but just regular everyday type of people healthy. And if you wanted a million dollars worth of coverage for a 35 year old male, you're looking at approximately $70 a month. It's not bad, right? 35 year old male, approximately $70 a month for a million dollars worth of life insurance. Now, if you are a female, then that rate is actually around $59 a month for the same coverage, same term, all of that. So you can see, we didn't even talk about male versus female with our rating criteria. Uh, I kinda wanted to keep that until the end, but we know males live less than the females do. So congratulations to all you ladies out there. You're gonna outlive your husbands or significant others for whatever reason. So males are gonna have a little bit higher premium than females, all things being equal. Hey folks. Hope you have a little better understanding of about rating factors for life insurance. And as always, please reach out and get yourself some life insurance. Everyone needs it. The rates aren't bad. You can afford it. You can afford something. Until next time, we'll see you. God, 